What's going on, everybody? I am the Kilted Cage, and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to try to talk a little slower. <clears throat> I get a little carried away. I get a little ahead of myself. But today, tonight, at this moment, you're watching this video whenever it is. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. But I want to talk about a little something that came around my desk. Yeah, anyway, a couple of days ago, in this article from Screen Rant. Daredevil showrunner calls for huge penalties in the wake of cancellations. Daredevil showrunner Stephen Denight is calling for major financial penalties against studios in the wake of ongoing film cancellations. Congratulations, you just added more words to the title of your article. Okay. So, Lucas Shayo, uh, Shayo, Shayo. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Writes this article, the original showrunner for Netflix's hit show Daredevil is speaking out against the ongoing TV cancellations for shows that have already been filmed. That was the first time. This happened with the Batwoman, or Batgirl, <clears throat> TV show with Brendan Fraser, and <clears throat> it was canceled after filming was done. Apparently Warner Brothers felt like uh, it would do more harm than good to release the video, and not only can them canned it, shelved it. Apparently, they deleted all evidence of it, which was unheard of considering it cost almost a hundred million dollars to make. There's very unprecedented things going on, at War especially at Warner Brothers, with all these shows being canceled. But, article goes on to say, Daredevil was a highly, su yes, blah, blah, useless information, highly successful series centering around, yes, it not relevant to the article. Though it proved to be a major hit, the show canceled after Marvel Studios and Disney rescinded the rights to the Defenders from Netflix. Yep, that has nothing to do with what you're talking about, but hey, let's fluff the article. Even goes on to say, those cancellations were somewhat planned. Yep, which has nothing to do with your article. But that hasn't been the case across Hollywood. This is true. Okay, moving on. While HBO Max wiping clean its slate of movies and TV shows, 2022 saw countless productions completely disappear, with HBO vowing to stop producing scripted shows. Eh, interesting. Even in the middle of filming, popular shows like this one, this one, well, Minx, Love, Life, and Infinity Train. I looked those up. Infinity Train was an animated show. Minx was about <clears throat> a feminist creating a... Um, Risque magazine, something along the lines of Playgirl, a magazine for women, and Love Life, which uh, followed numerous people around in in their different relationships to show how they were. They those relationships changed them. Interesting concepts, but viewership, you know, may not have been all that great. Wiped clean without any warning whatsoever leaving actors, writers, and animators with no recourse and no evidence of years of work. Now, that is unfortunate. However, <clears throat> if the studio owns the rights to what you are producing and they paid you for what you are doing, they don't have to show it. This is ha I mean, this isn't an anomaly. It happens all the time. But this idea that the studio should be penalized for doing whatever the hell they want to with their property is preposterous. A studio being penalized for getting rid of something that they don't want to show, maybe maybe they felt like whatever you were writing, whatever you were showing off was not uh, up to snuff. Maybe it's not making them money. Why on earth would a studio continue to produce, to continue to pay for a product that is not living up to their standards. That doesn't happen in the real world. I don't know what world you're living in, Stephen Tonight, but that's not reality. Daredevil showrunner Stephen Tonight took to Twitter, of course, because Twitter's the real world. Twitter is a just a fantastic uh, example of what the real world is. Uh, to speak out against the practice, calling for financial penalties and union support to keep shows from facing abrupt cancellations. I'm kind of in favor of this, and I'll explain why in a minute. <clears throat> the WGA, Stephen Twitter, here's the Twitter, here's the tweet. The WGA, DGA, and SAG-AFTRA, whatever, S-A-G-F-F-A-F-T-R-A, -A, need to crack down on the practice during their next respective negotiations. Pull that shit, huge, face huge financial penalties. I said that. 
to the cat pays huge financial penalties to the cast. Oh, so uh, that sounds like extortion. To the cast, crew, and creative, watch it stop real quick. You are correct on that, sir. It will stop. What else is going to stop is you're not even going to be contacted. Unless your pitch meeting is second to none and you have a guaranteed winner on your hands, you're not even going to make it to the to the writing stage. You're not even going to the writing stage. You're not going to make it past square one. You're just not. They're going to look at your script and go, okay, this isn't going to make any money. We're not even going to bother. Or it's not going to make enough money, and we're not even going to bother. What this will do is simply make studios far more hesitant to give anyone a chance. And that's the problem. Maybe we'll get better scripts. Maybe we'll get nothing. But we definitely won't get the trash that we've been handed over the past few years. Shit like She-Hulk. God, I can't even stop that. Why have so many completed projects been cut recently? Uh, Because the test screenings were shite. Because it didn't appear that the product was going to make their money back. So they just said, nah cut their losses. While Daredevil's Tonight is speaking out about the cancellation of 61st Street, which is an AMC product production, the last the past year has seen Warner Brothers become the face of removals and cancellations. Yes, because they're trying to make their money back. They see how much money they've been losing over the past years. And they're trying to cut their losses. They're trying to make something back. They're trying to rebrand. They brought in James Gunn to try and salvage the DC Universe, in which case he dumped Henry Cavill on his ass. Good job. After Warner Brothers and the Discovery merger, the company has been stripping HBO Max to its bare essentials because it wasn't making any money and cutting serious projects as a method to save money through tax write-offs. Yes, because they didn't believe the products the projects were going to make them any money. While Warner Brothers Discovery is done cutting shows, it is hard to forget the reactions of the cast and crew when Batgirl was canceled after the movie had already been filmed, or the reaction of animators when Infinity Train was taken off of HBO Max. Yep, again, like I said, the executives, they don't care about your feelings. They don't care about the hard work you've done. That is unfortunate, but it is a fact. It is a a reality that you must face. You create something, people don't like it, they're not going to see it. It is unfortunate. And unfortunately, when you sign that contract with these studios, they own you. They own your work. There is just, I'm talking with my hands. I'm not even on camera. Oh my goodness. Anyway, studios have decided that it may be more profitable to leave movies incomplete in the wake of bad test screenings, like I said, rather than face another Morbius. Oh boy which was the subject of online ridicule for months and flopped at the box office twice. It flopped twice. Why? Because the studio fell for online trolls and released it twice. It tanked twice. Wow, I said that. By claiming the production on their taxes, those companies can save money and avoid cluttering HBO Max and other streaming services. Like, how bad? Okay. How bad? Do test screenings have to be that you're not even going to finish production and put it on your streaming service? Like, genuinely. Honestly, the only thing this news did for Batgirl was make people want to see it more because they genuinely wanted to see how how bad does this have to be that they don't even want it to see the light of day on a streaming service. That's amazing. After all, each episode or movie takes up valuable space and can cost the company money. Yes, it does cost bandwidth and all that other nifty shit. It's how Warner Brothers managed to save two billion... Wow, what? It's how Warner Brothers managed to save two billion after the Batgirl cancellation and other axed projects. Ooh, boy. Oh. If their cost-benefit analysis determines that it isn't worth the release to release the product projects, they will never be released. Which is what enrages Daredevil show, former showrunner. I don't blame him necessarily. However, I do not agree with his method of fixing it. What might be a better idea... Now hear me out. This, this may seem a little, a little um, outrageous. A little far-fetched. Maybe a dream. Write better stories. Okay? Just that simple. Write better stories. 
Stop chastising your fans. Stop insulting them. Stop calling them names. Call them, stop, being, stop calling them istophobes and this, that, and the other. Just stop. Talk about your show. Don't talk about diversity and inclusion and this and that and all virtue signaling bullshit. Talk about the story. Talk about the setting. Talk about the story. Talk about the actors and actresses. Stop pandering to the wrong crowd. You need to be pandering. We'll go with this case of She-Hulk. You need to be pandering to the people who bought the comic book. You need to be pandering to the toxic masculinity crowd because they're the ones that watch the show. They're the ones that bought the comic. They're the ones that are interested in the characters of the Fantastic Four, of She-Hulk, of Scarlet Witch, of all these characters that you claim we don't want to see. And we, by we, I mean men. You try to sit there and run your mouth about you don't want to see a female, a strong female character in a lead. Yes, we do. But we want it to be well written. We want it to be good. We want it to be interesting. We want to see them struggle. We do. I'm sorry. You just want to see a woman fail. No, we want to see them struggle and overcome that failure. That is a good story. It's, it's something that everyone can relate to. Everyone. Struggle, overcome. You can relate to it. And you can aspire to that point. You aspire to that point? I hope you know what I mean because I don't even think I can try to repeat it. Why another writer strike? This might be the best thing to happen to have a writer strike because then you would have people who have been struggling to get their stories out there to be put up into the forefront. Or it will push the Iron Age to where it needs to be. If the writer strike happens and nothing new is coming out, people are going to start going to alternative sources. They're going to go to YouTube. More and more people are coming to channels like mine. Thank you very much. I don't know why, but I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're going to find people like Razor Fist, and they're buying his book. They're going to find Eric July and the I Some comic book. They're going to hunt down even people like Markiplier who has millions upon millions of subscribers and fans across the globe and they're going to watch his little choose your own adventure show Markiplier in space I highly recommend that by the way please go watch it if you haven't already fantastic and he's hilarious people like them they're going out on their own they're tired of you know you keep saying over and over, if you don't like it, create your own. Well, people are, and that's what they're doing. But I digress, because I do that. Nice little tangent. While the cancellation strategy may be saving money in the short term, it could cost the studios. Oh, no. The multi-billion dollar studio is struggling. In 2007 and 2008, the Writers Guild of America took a stand against the industry, and nothing of value was lost, and began a strike that saw the entire world of entertainment grind to a halt. Not really. The movie delayed show, the move delayed shows, shortened season, and even caused outright cancellations. Oh, okay. So in order to fight delays and cancellations of your beloved TV shows, you're going to go on strike that's going to cause delays and cancellations in your TV shows that you're writing. Okay because that makes sense. Ah, with showrunners starting to take a stand against these practices, Hollywood may be bracing to face yet another writer strike, which could be massive in the midst of a golden age of television? I'm sorry. What? This is not the golden age of television. If anything... I said it already. I don't want to say it's the golden age of the independent creator. It is the Iron Age. To quote, well, to paraphrase Razor Fist, it doesn't look pretty, but it's going to stand the test of time because these products are going to be created with love and heart and soul and the love for the fan, the understanding that they would, these people would not be where they are. Eric July would not be where he is if it wasn't for his fans. Okay, it's just that simple. Markiplier would be nothing without the people who tune into him. Yes, he is entertaining, but he's good at what he does. He's funny, he's entertaining, lovable, absolutely wholesome person. But he would not have gotten to where he was without, the, of course, without the hard work, but without his fans, whom he thanks constantly 
Again, think what you want about the different people I mentioned, the different people I talk about and the company I keep, but not one time has any of them insulted their fan base. They've never told anyone, if you don't like it, don't watch it. If you don't like me, don't watch me. If you don't like this, no. They've said, hey, if you like it, awesome. They have a different opinion. If you don't like it, cool. They have a different opinion. They may have a similar opinion, but this... It's the number one thing that needs to stop. Stop insulting the fans. With showrunners starting to take a stand, yeah, blah, blah. Golden age of television, that is laughable at best. This is not the golden age of television. If anything, it's the fucking toilet water of television. With AMC, there are some gems out there. Don't get me wrong. There are some absolute gems. Um, oh, shoot. House of the Dragon. I've heard that's really good. Arcane on Netflix. On Netflix, Arcane. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's good. It's animated. It's not for kids. With AMC, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Netflix cancellation. Next, and Netflix's cancel. What? Hold on. With AMC, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Netflix's cancellation rules wreak rules cancellation rules wreaking havoc on the careers of. I don't even. Anyway. With AMC, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Netflix's cancellation rules wreaking havoc on the careers of writers, another writer strike may well be on the way if negotiations fail, which seems to be exactly what the Daredevil showrunner is subtly calling for. I'm begging you. Strike. If you think it's going to help you, absolutely. I'm all in favor of people for people standing up for what they believe. I would not deride any single one of them. However, you have to be willing, ready, and able to face the consequences of your actions. Okay? You got the right to do what you want, but hey, the studio has the right to ignore your ass and fire you. Let you go, not employ you at all. Go to other avenues of, to get some scripts written. Get those filthy scabs in the office, in the writing room. In... <clears throat> Shows like She-Hulk hurt me. It was bad writing. I couldn't care less who wrote it. I don't care. I didn't care who starred in it. None of that mattered to me. I was worried about the story and the visuals. And they were both terrible. Absolutely terrible. At the time of this recording, Velma comes out tomorrow. Comes out on January 12th. I made a couple of videos, at least one, on that little shit show. I will be uh I will be reviewing it because I'm a fan of Scooby Doo. I want to see what this is. I'm going to give it a chance. I said I would and I will. There's a few other shows that I'm gonna have to force myself to watch. But stuff like this is just it's hilarious. To think that going on a strike is going to help your situation. In the midst of cancellations, you think a strike is going to help. No, it's just going to lead to more cancellations. You're going to lose. Maybe the studios will cave. Maybe, just maybe, these studios see the writing on the wall. They understand that what you've been giving them is garbage. The things you've been writing, maybe not you, Stephen, tonight, because if you were on the showrunner for Daredevil, I heard that was a fantastic show. Congratulations. I need to watch it. I definitely need to watch it. But all these other shows, all these other writers, they're hot garbage. They're not even, they're terrible jokes bad writing as in general so maybe the studios see that and they're not interested in more bad writing they're not interested in more bad press more fans speaking out against garbage on the streaming services they're losing subscribers they're losing money people are losing interest in being preached to and ridiculed and insulted most of the time Movies like Star Wars should have been money hand over fist for Disney. And yet, the sequel trilogy revenue went down after each subsequent film. Why? They still made money. They still made a massive amount of money. But they should have made more. But the hype was gone because of the terrible writing. Solo lost money. Why? Terrible writing. She-Hulk was terrible writing. We'll see where this goes. Personally, I'm all in favor of watching it all burn down to the ground. I have my own entertainment. I don't watch TV anymore unless it's something I want to talk about. That will be Velma next. Next episode of 
Trigun Stampede. Can't wait for that. Looks interesting so far. I'm going to get used to the animation style, but we'll see where it goes. But I've rambled on enough. That's enough for now. I appreciate you for sticking around this long. Leave a like, leave a dislike. Let me know what you think in the comics. Comics? Oh, my goodness. Good night, everybody. I hope to see you on the next one.